Hello everyone. I'm so glad to be here again. I'm so glad that you have joined me for studying the Word of God. It's uh, life to us and it's nourishment to us and it's so important to us. Well, do you remember the story of Pinocchio? Uh, it's the story of a wooden puppet whose owner uh, named P Pinocchio, um, his, uh, the person that made him was Giuseppe. The puppet maker was Giuseppe and he was very, very lonely and he, he just had a wish and his desire that his puppet, Pinocchio, would become a real boy. And in the story, a fairy um, granted him a wish, but Pinocchio had to prove himself worthy of being a human. And one of the problems that Pinocchio had was a problem with lying. And every time that Pinocchio lied, his nose grew, and it grew and grew and grew, and it got so long. So he... Pinocchio had a problem with lying and he had to learn not to lie. Um, you know that might be a good deal for us if we if our new nose grew when we were lying or if we could see when someone else is lying by their nose growing. <clears throat> that would be pretty awesome, I guess. You know, those, there's also a Hallmark movie titled I'm Not Ready for Christmas. It's about a woman who was basically a compulsive liar and her niece wished that her aunt wouldn't lie anymore and so like a spell was put on her or whatever and she couldn't lie so <clears throat> you know those are the things of fairy tales but <clears throat> lying is a real problem in <clears throat> our society and in every society <clears throat> that has ever been since the beginning of time lying is a problem <clears throat> did you know that one of the na names that god is descri described by is truth God is truth. In Deuteronomy 32.4, Deuteronomy 32.4, it says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. So God is true. God is truth. God hates lying. Lying is repulsive to God. God does not like it at all. In Proverbs 6.16, 6, Proverbs 6.16 6, in the New Living Translation, it says, there are six things the Lord hates. So God hates these. No seven things he detests. So there were six, but there's really seven. Haughty eyes, which is kind of the sin of pride. A lying tongue. Hands that kill the innocent. A heart that plots evil feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who di sows discord in a family. And for that family, you could say in your natural family or in your church family. People who sow discord, God hates that. So if you notice, two of those things are lying, a lying tongue and a false witness who pours out lies. And usually a person who sows discord in a family is lying about people too. So of those seven things, two of them have to do with lying. So lying is bad, God hates it, and telling the truth is very important to God. So today, I'm going to talk about big lies in the Bible. What? Lies in the Bible? Well, the Bible doesn't lie, and God doesn't lie, but the Bible records some really big lies, some really big whoppers. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about four of them today. The first one is found basically at the very beginning in Genesis 3, verse 1. Genesis 3, verse 1, and I'm reading out of the NIV. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat, eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. So we see here that the serpent said you will not surely die and, and, and uh, uh, stark contrast to what God said. So the serpent was lying to Eve. The serpent, or the devil, was trying to convince Eve that, and, and was successful at it, 
that there were no bad results from sin. He was trying to convince Eve and was successful at it that God's word didn't mean what it meant. He, con he successfully convinced her that sin does not lead to death. He convinced her to put what God told them, Adam and Eve, into the trash heap. And how many times is that still at work today? I think many times we have the same struggle going on in our lives. You know, this sin isn't really sin. It's not really all that bad. I won't get caught. I'm under God's grace. Everyone is doing it. Heck, you know, just enjoy your life. You only live once. But no matter what lies the devil hits you with, and no matter how many lies you tell yourself to excuse sin, sin is still sin, and sin still leads to death. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus our Lord. So um, back in the Garden of Eden, sin led to death, and right now in 2022, sin also leads to death. But thank God, God has provided a solution for that in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so the first big lie, line number one, was that the serpent was lying to Eve, convincing her not to obey God and convincing her that disobedience will not lead to death. And that's a big lie that's been handed down all throughout the centuries um, that sin does not lead to death, but it does. It leads to eternal death. Um, and God has provided a solution through Jesus Christ when we take advantage of it. Now, this, ready for the second one? The second big lie. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, it records many, many, many instances of false prophets lying to God's people. The Bible describes false prophets as adulterous, treacherous, wicked, liars, and associated with divination and witchcraft. Now, the thing that we have to understand is that these false prophets worked within God's people in the Old Testament, and they're still working within God's people uh, today. So they're within the church structure today. They're within the ministry, within church families. They're, they're, they're at work today. They have a role uh, often as, it, well, throughout the Bible, they have a role as priest or prophet or pastor or some other kind of title like that. They are loved, they're liked, they're followed by Christian people. And in the Old Testament, they were followed by the Israelites and they were looked to as leaders and spiritual guides to the Israelite. So, like I said, it's all over the Bible, many, 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 many instances of false prophets. So let's just look at one book of the Bible and look at a little tiny bit of what um, it says about false prophets. So we're going to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a true prophet of God and he records what God has said about false prophets. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 5 verse 12. This is in the New Living Translation. It says, they have lied about what the Lord has said about the Lord and said, he won't bother us. No disasters will come upon us. There will be no war or famine. God's prophets are all windbags who don't really speak for him. Let their predictions of disaster fall on themselves. So in this verse in Jeremiah, it's saying that the, the false prophets are lying. They're giving people false hope and they're windbags and, and that they're not speaking for the Lord. Then in the same chapter, Jeremiah 5, verse 30, in the NIV, Jeremiah 5, verse 30, it says, A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy lies. The priests rule by their own authority, and my people love it this way. So, oh my gosh, it's saying that the people of God love the false prophets, love to be lied to, and that's, uh, the Bible says that's horrible and shocking. So I think that the, these scriptures really ought to give us pause when we look to people as prophets and um, really um, give us some insight and instruction in, into how we need to really evaluate whether they truly are prophets of God. Jeremiah 6, 13, 
Jeremiah 6.13, it says, From the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain, prophets and priests alike, all practice deceit. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, when there is no peace. So here again, we find that the prophets are lying to the people. They're um, giving them false hope. They're uh, giving them a false sense of, of the way they're living their lives is okay. They're giving them a false sense of hope about the uh, state of their nation. And it also says that they're greedy. They're greedy. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. Jeremiah 14, verse 14. It says, Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and delusions of their own minds. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them. So there was just a plethora of prophecy and visions and divinations. And I, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. I had a dream about this. I had a vision about that. Um, and the Bible says, the Lord says that he did not send them. And what they're doing is false in its lies. Jeremiah 23, verse 16 says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. And down to verse 21, it says, uh, I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Wow. You know that most of the prophets that are talked about in the Bible most an overwhelming amount of prophets that are spoken of in the Bible are false prophets. Did you know that true prophets of God are very rare and are usually very unpopular and even hated? And we see that they are also uh, killed. Jeremiah was killed. Isaiah was killed. So um, if you're looking for the most popular prophet, the most well-loved, he you know, you might think about what the Bible has to say about prophets because they're usually um, not very many and they aren't very well liked because they tell the truth. And people in the end don't really want to hear the truth many times. In uh, Jesus talked about false prophets in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 7. He said to watch out for false prophets. So um, it's throughout the Old Testament and throughout the New Testament and so it's so important, so important that if someone says they're a prophet, just know that there's probably a really good chance they're a false prophet and God gives us ways to evaluate that. A true prophet will lead people to Jesus and to repentance and prepare them for the times of head. Prophecies, the prophecies they give, a true prophet, the prophecies they give are proven true. And I just really, I, you know, there's so much more I could say about this, but Pastor Terry did an excellent teaching on this uh, in January of 2021 titled, What About Political Prophecies? And it gives you a lot of um, guidelines for judging prophecy, judging prophets. And um, I just really encourage you to listen to that. I'll, I'll put the link in the description below because it's really important not to be led astray. So, like I said, I just really encourage you to listen to that to help determine the accuracy of people who call themselves prophets today. So, the second big lie in the Bible is false prophecies and false prophets. Now, the third big lie uh, is the devil lying to Jesus while Jesus was in the wilderness trying to tempt him to sin. So, Jesus underwent great temptation and um, part of that was the devil uh, um, telling him lies and Jesus having to uh, 
determine whether he was telling lies or truth and sticking with the truth. So let's turn to Matthew 4, Matthew 4, verse 5. And uh, here is Satan lying <laughs> in one of the temptations, just like he did back in the Garden of Eden. It says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. One really important lesson in this is um, people who lie uh, in the spiritual realm about the scripture often use the scripture and just twist it a little bit or take it out of context or do just something a little bit, little bit off to try to convince you that what it's saying isn't, isn't exactly right. So what the devil did here, he just took a portion of scripture and he took it out of context and he twisted it to convince Jesus to sin. But Jesus knew the word of God well enough to answer the devil properly and to not have the devil's lies destroy God's whole plan for salvation. So you see how important it is to know the word of God really, really well to avoid temptation uh, and, to, and to, you don't want to succumb to the lies of the devil. You know, back um, during the pandemic, many people used the devil's reasoning that, that Jesus just refuted um, during the pandemic. Uh, they said, go ahead, take no precautions. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Well, basically, you know, the devil was, said, was saying, throw yourself off this pinnacle. The angels, just command the angels to protect you. So when we say, I'm not going to take any precautions when there's a pandemic out, of, out there, Jesus will protect me. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. You know, we're succumbing to the lies of the devil. And Jesus said that that type of reasoning was tempting the Lord and we don't want to do that. And unfortunately, some people that use that line of reasoning became sick and some even lost their lives. And so we want to know scripture so well that we understand the context that it's in, what God meant. And you know what? That really takes a lot of hard work and dedication. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't really interested in, the, in that. They're just um, in for basically a quick fix on Sunday morning. And that's all they really, you know, uh, dedicate to really knowing the word of God. And, you know, uh, we need to give uh, God's word more uh, attention than that. So I did ask you a question. Do you know the word of God well enough to fight against error? Um, just for an instance, when you see a scripture meme, you know, which, which means just a scripture posted on, on social media, just one scripture, you know, maybe in a graphic. Do you know, do you understand the context that it was taken from? Do you ever look up the whole verse, the whole, I mean, the whole, like the whole, uh, a lot of times the scripture meme won't even be a whole verse. It'll be just a half a verse or a part of a verse. Do you know what uh, was really being talked about um, when that, you know, on that scripture, do you really understand the whole context of it? One of the greatest examples of this is Jeremiah 29 11. and I'm not going to read it to you I want you to look it up by yourself read it for yourself and find out what was going on with the Israelites and where they were headed when this scripture when when God said this to them so I just encourage you to do that Jeremiah 29 11, and you might be surprised you know how that scripture is quoted all the time there's memes about it. There's, it's posted all the time. People, you know, have it on sweatshirts. They have it on coffee mugs. But if people really understood the, the, the um, seriousness of that scripture and what it really means and, and, and what it reveals about God, um, it would just mean so much more. So just, I encourage you to do that, 20, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. So the fourth big lie is one of the biggest lies in the Bible. The fourth big lie is one of the biggest lies in the Bible. It was done for money, for power, and for control. So I'm going to read the scripture for you. The setting of this, it was, this was after the resurrection. There was a violent earthquake at the resurrection. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled back the stone, 
Jesus Christ was seen resurrected. The Bible says um, that the, the angel, the, the appearance, his appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So let's turn now to Matthew 28, verse 11. Matthew 28, verse 11, halfway through the verse. Some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave uh, the soldiers a lar large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldier took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been wild, widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Wow. <laughs> religious leader, church people, religious leaders, people of God paid for a big lie to maintain control, position, and power. And the guards lied for the money and out of fear. So uh, that's a pretty big lie. That's a pretty big lie. When the guards saw all that, they experienced all that, and they're gonna lie about it out of fear of, uh, a fear of the, um, uh, let's see, fear of the governor and fear of the religious leaders and for money. And the religious leaders wanted it lied about because they wanted to maintain power they wanted to maintain control. And that is a really big lie. Always remember people will lie to maintain control, position, and power. And a lot of times they will make you afraid. Um, they will lie to make you afraid and keep you under their power. So one exciting thing is that lie did not have power over the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the re resurrection of Jesus Christ is too powerful to be put down by a bunch of religious leaders and a, a, and a few guards that were lying. So the power, the power of the gospel is greater than any lie. So just think about that, you know, uh, people do lie to maintain power and control and they use fear tactics and money to keep lies going. So we've talked about four big lies in the Bible. The serpent lying to Eve, that there are no consequences of sin. The false prophets telling lies to lead God's people astray. The devil twisting the word of God and lying to Jesus to tempt him. Oh, back, back on the false prophets. Um, oh, so many times in the Old Testament, it talks about how the people loved the lies. The people loved false prophets. They loved, uh, loved what they said. So that's really important. Anyway, number three, the devil twisting the word of God and lying to Jesus to tempt him, and he'll do the same to us. And number four, religious people paying the guards to lie about the resurrection, to maintain power and control and using fear tactics and money. So I encourage you today, do not lie. Unfortunately, our noses don't grow when we lie but do not lie and do not listen to lies, whether it be from the devil or from people or from false prophets. And remember how much God hates lying. You know, as a pastor's wife, I know so well what it is to be lied about. I have heard some doozies, some real whoppers told about Pastor Terry and I. I've always found it interesting that Christian people will believe lies about other people. Some things are so outlandish that you just want to fall down laughing and other things are so hurtful that you just want to cry, the lies that people tell. I've found that people generally enjoy spreading negative stuff more than good news. So I just encourage you when you are going about your day, think about, you know, am I spreading good news or am I spreading hurtful things about people? You know, I've tried to follow a guideline not to repeat anything negative about a follow, fellow Christian, and I have kept my mouth shut so many times. Um, I try to remember it might be a lie, just pe like people have lied about me. I certainly haven't been perfect about this, but I try so hard. And when someone lies about me, I try really hard to remember 
to forgive them and to pray for them. Um, and sometimes I have to do it many, many times um, just to keep keep my my thought and my thoughts and my um, heart right. Um, but it's really important uh, not to spread lies. When you hear something, you're only hearing one side of the story. And if you're going to talk about somebody, have the courtesy and have the decency to find out the other side of the story before you spread spread lies. And a note about social media, please do not repeat or share or spread something negative on social media unless you have verified it through a couple of reputable sources. Not just sources that would validate what you think, but 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 different kinds of sources to really see if what you're spreading what you're sharing is really true. And then, you know, if, even if it is true, even if there's something uh, negative about a person that is true, um, think about why you're spreading it and, and, you know, do you really want to hurt that person and their family? And is that really, really what the Lord Jesus Christ would want us to do? Are you walking in love? Are you being nasty? You know, social media can be a cesspool of lies. And remember that God hates lies. Don't be part of that cesspool. You know, um, I'm, I'll just close by encouraging you not to be like Pinocchio. Tell the truth. Don't listen to liars. God hates lies. Well, I hope this has helped you. I hope it's uh, given you some insight into lies in the Bible and how they are very prevalent and how uh, we're to walk with integrity. Um, a lot of times it means saying a whole lot less than a whole lot more in our society and a lot of times we just need to keep our mouth shut. Um, spreading the truth is so much more gracious and honorable and shows you have integrity. Well, um, I want to encourage you, if you've never thought about the wages of sin leading to death, I just encourage you um, to think about that, to ponder that, to uh, think about where your eternal destiny is. If um, wait, the wages of sin are death, to pray with you. We'd love to send you a Bible.